Okay, it is being recorded as of now, so don't say anything bad about Andrea because she might cry. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, well, <laughs> t it, it, it it is the season. Um, yeah. So so this is our our reboot, and I got to tell you that you you guys are so not alone. There has been. I think that we spent a good 50% of last year retraining because every time there was a big turnover from the tsunami effect that we had from four years ago or three years ago, um, there's yet another wave of turnover or you're just so darn busy with new things going on in the life of public health that um, we we decided, okay, we'll do this reboot training. We'll, we'll train everybody, retrain them and hopefully that will get some enthusiasm. We want to be very adaptable to this, your, you and your staff, um, instead of you guys going, oh, now we have to get back into performance management and be a drudgery. So we're, we're going to first give you that overview. That's because, you know, if you've never seen it or you haven't seen it for a long time, it's like getting involved in putting together a thousand piece puzzle without the box. We're giving you the box today and, and um, heading through this overview, we normally will give you a drink from a fire hose, uh, but this time we're just going to give you a little drink from a garden hose. And this is our mascot. Uh, if if you've seen all of our pesty emails that we send out, most of the time it has the horse attached. And um, I, I, Kayla, are you guys going through reaccreditation? Um, we are in, in the process. We've not done our official application for reaccreditation just yet. Okay. Okay. Well, so as you well know, if you, you, you've seen it before that most of our health departments, um, when they're working on accreditation, not everybody is, but, or reaccreditation, we, you have those domains. And when I came aboard, um, in 2016, I said, well, well, goodness, I, I would go through the domains. I said, why in the world? is performance management down in domain nine. Isn't that kind of like putting the cart before the horse? We, we have to be able to plan before we can perform. And so we stuck with it and for this many years and everything is about the horse. <laughs> so with, with health departments going through all, all the changes that, that they're going through, uh, you know, at times we find that maybe the accreditation coordinator it could be the director, it could be the team leads, the group leads. They're kind of looking like this. It's like you've got new grants, you've got new SOPs, MOUs. Um, now you're going to go through reaccreditation and how we're going to have the time. So hopefully by the time we get finished with the overview and you revisit the dashboard, you're going to feel, okay, that's right. The system can do this. The plans are built in. Um, it will make your, make your life a little easier. So you, I think that you all know that we are exclusively a public health performance management system. And um, we were built in the public health department, a pretty large jurisdiction. Uh, be, they service about 5 million in, um, well, actually probably a lot less than that in the summertime, but in, in the wintertime is between five to 7 million. I can already see the traffic as I'm going from here, uh, here to there it's just packed now there everybody's back um, but the, the health director primarily wanted this bill as a comprehensive operational planning and execution uh system based on that deming cycle having that qi portion structured into the system now this is way before uh fab came along and and then when fab did come along lo and behold they they had a fully demonstrated performance management system and this, this is because he wanted to make this available to every office every program every every level of the department and have them be involved in the organizational success. Well, that's domain nine, 9.1.1a. .1 .1 and it even tells you, we want to have your external partners involved. We want people from every department involved. And um, that, you know, ba basically fulfills that. The dashboard is so much, much more. And I think that departments are utilizing it for, I, I think that we have one department that based on the SOPs, she's built a whole library of SOPs to be able to track it and monitor it. But for today's, pur the, today's purpose, we're going to go through all the different ways you can use it, but focus in on that reaccreditation project plan we have. 
uh, we first define performance management as, um, you know, a, a, as three basic steps. And the first step is to create a good operational plan. And, and what is that? An operational plan is a specific group of people doing a specific activity with a specific metric in a specific time frame. And then after you get the plan going, you're going to monitor that plan. Monitoring the plan, you're, everybody's going, every group, office, every level is going to be able to have a dashboard. And that would be your macro level of monitoring. So you may want to have a group or a domain or your strategic plan and just be able to glance and see how are we doing on this? Where are we uh, slow on this? What stopped us? Um, that's when you are delivered to the micro level of monitoring when hopefully you get to that first. And that is if anything's gonna go awry in your plan, um, let's say you don't have enough widgets to install, someone's got on a maternity leave, we have a turnover here, we need some help. That is on the micro level. Every element of your plan can be monitored on this level. And then again, we wanna do that before it gets to the macro level. The public uh, interface, is a way that you can design, you can pick all the indicators, elements of your plan that you would want, want the public to know. And we create more of a, at a glance, uh, pie charts, Gantt charts, to have them be able to view how you're doing on, you know, let's say fab accreditation or how you're doing on your strategic plan. And then the, you're able to create a link and we teach you all this to put into your website. Now, we did not know as we created this that it's primarily used to report to the board of directors um, or to possibly the director that he or she does maybe not know, want to know, okay, who's been late in the system, who's, you know, who's on time, or they just want to know how everything's going on the strategic plan. So the last level of, or last step to performance management is performance improvement, probably the most important because things change all the time. You're going to want to make changes to that plan as you go along. So you, you've built your plan, you've structured it into the system. Now you're executing the plan. You've assigned the activities to people. They're doing the activities. You're checking through your macro or micro level of monitoring. And then you're also making your adjustments back into the plan. So that would be the Deming cycle, plan, do, check, and adjust. Um, so when Fred opens up the dashboard, uh, you're going to see a pyramid. Oh, pyramid. You see the pyramid now. You're going to see a set of navigational tabs that go from left to right. And with that said, the pyramid is here to illustrate the hierarchy of the system. So the, the top of the pyramid would be your organization, your department. The next navigational tab you'll be using is your groups. And there are many different levels of groups. Um, you can have fab accreditation as a group. You can have different domains underneath each group. You can have um, your grants, uh, your QI department. Underneath each group, you're going to have your own set of services and initiatives, what you're planning on doing in the future. Underneath each service and initiative, they're going to have their own set of goals. Those goals are going to have their own set of objectives and objectives activities. And he goes through that really fast. Um, and Fred, this is where uh, I always repeat myself. Fred, Fred thinks that breathing is overrated, and he goes pretty fast. So, are are you ready? Take my one breath. One big deep breath. Now, and, and oh, please, I this is such a great group. And but sometimes large groups they they won't ask questions. Please feel free to knock him off his game and ask a question um, if there you know, any uncertainty. But I also want um, to keep in mind that we drill down on this really deeper in the other trainings. And I always say, don't take notes during this time because it does go fast. We're gonna teach you all the tools that you're gonna need during those other trainings. And uh, this is where we call progress over perfection. All right, Fred, you ready? I'm ready, thank you, Andrea. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is, again, we're going to go live into the system and we're going to walk through uh, creating an operational plan. We're going to monitor the operational plan and we're going to take it through the PDCA cycle to see how we might make improvements to the operational plan. Now, the reason the pyramid exists in, as a model for operational planning, give you an example. Uh, the strategic plan itself is a, a group. 
Now, under there, typically you'll have somewhere between three and seven strategic initiatives uh, as an average. And let's say we have four of those under there. Each of those strategic initiatives might have four goals. Each of those four goals might have four objectives. Each of those four objectives might have four activities. So if you do the math, I think that comes out to be about 256 activities. So I think you can see how the pyramid gets pretty wide down at the bottom here. Now, we have a little demo organization we call USA Public Health. And I know some of you have seen this before, so please uh, bear with me as we go through it again, just trying to refresh your memory for one thing here. I'm going to go live into the system. So when you log in, you're going to see a screen like this. Uh, and depending on your login permissions as to how many of these uh, menu items you'll see over here. But these are the tabs Andrew is referring to. So as I go across the tabs from left to right, I'm going down the pyramid and filtering uh, the pyramid. So I'm going to go to my groups tab here. Now, your groups tab is the structure of your department plus uh, each of the primary plans, what FAB calls their six-pack of plans. So the strategic plan, your child, your CHIP, your QI, emergency ops, and uh, workforce development plans are typically groups within themselves, and they're reporting up to the department. So you see the levels over here. A level two always reports to a level one. You have finance under admin, as you can see, as a level three. Uh, and then we have public health infrastructure grant under finance as a level four. So the levels go from one to 10. Nobody's ever gotten that far, but uh, it just gives you an idea of the hierarchy in your department. I'm going to go down here to my community health division to start with. Now, under community health, you see we have tobacco and WIC. So these are subgroups to community health. Today, I'm going to go into the tobacco group here. And I'm going to start going down the pyramid. So I'm going to look at the services or initiatives within the tobacco group. And you'll see we have the three of them here, tobacco cessation, secondhand smoke, tobacco initiation prevention. Now, today we're going to focus on tobacco cessation. So what are the specific high-level goals for tobacco cessation? By selecting tobacco cessation and clicking the next tab, it's limiting me to the goals for tobacco cessation. So you can see down here we have reduced smoking in high schools. Reduce smoking in colleges. Reduce smoking in public areas. Uh, you may notice that these goals are fairly high level. So when I tell you we're going to reduce smoking in high schools, it's pretty obvious to everybody what that means. What it doesn't tell you, however, is where we're going to start, which high schools. How much do you think we can reduce smoking in high schools? By when can we reduce smoking to that level in here? So there's a lot more detail to come. You'll notice at this point in time we assign the traffic light. Uh, the traffic light is just a visual indication of status, so it's really easy to look at and kind of get an understanding of where we are. There's four traffic lights, actually. So green, is, as you expect, means go. Everything's moving along as expected. Typically, most things in the, in the dashboard are going to be green. Yellow would be something is slowing us down. Red would be something brought us to a screeching halt. Uh, and then the gold bar indicates successful completion of that portion of the plan. So if the goal is completed, that probably means that the objectives and activities under it are completed as well. Now, as I go down from reduced smoking in high schools to the SMART objectives, and again, if you Google SMART objectives, you're going to get probably 100 different definitions. Uh, our definition is pretty simple. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic or relevant. I kind of like relevant better and time-based. Now, what we try to focus on is specific, measurable and time-based. Uh, because if they're not realistic, you know, hey, why, why take your time to go after them here? So here's our example. Reduce smoking at my old alma mater in lovely Dayton, Ohio, Wayne High School, by 25% by the end of the school year. <laughs> so I can see, I think you can see uh, the specific, the measurement, and the time base in here. So it kind of fits the model pretty well. In order to get us to that particular target, if you look at that's a target, uh, we're going to assign this person called an objective lead. And again, like Andrea said, when we go into the next level of training, the operational planning, we're going to go into much, much more detail. Today, I'm just trying to get you the, the overview. So Steve is our objective lead. His job is two things. Number one, to get us to the 25% reduction. And number two, to update the status here. So currently, it says we're at a 25% reduction, which is great. The way Steve's going to update that status, typically, is he's going to get an automated email we call real-time planning. And you guys may have already been seeing these. Uh, the real-time planning email has a link. And that link will take right back in. Fred will log into the system, or Steve, in this case, will log into the system, and it'll take him right to the specific activities and objectives he's assigned to, including this one. So he can go right in there and do the update. Now, anytime Steve does an update on here, changes the traffic light, changes something in the uh, objective or the percent reduction or anything, he's going to want to put a note in here so anybody else looking at it will be able to understand exactly what's going on. 
So it says right here, uh, notes and comments was put in there, 325, 24, 838 AM. Fred Erickson put a note says add a 25% reduction. Now this time and date stamp is an option here. And that's what this little button right here does. So if I hit that, it puts the time and date stamp in, and then you can type in the note, or you can just type in a note if you want to. I recommend using the time and date stamp so everybody kind of knows who did what when. Now, in some cases, you're going to have a data source. Where am I going to go to get the information to update this particular plan element? Let's say that uh, we're going to be able to get that information from the CDC, Smoking Cessation, Fast Facts web page here. So we've got this data source available to you. To get there, I just click on the little link button. It's a chain link if you can't see it there. If I click on that, opens up a new browser tab, and sure enough, takes me right to the CDC Smoking Cessation Fast Facts. The idea here is if you've got a place on your intranet, on your file servers, on the internet, kind of any place you, you go, you're going to be able to have a link that you can put in there so I can just go right to that place, grab my information, put it into the dashboard, and I'm all done. Now, the uh, data sources are available at the goal level, the objective level, and the activity level. So you can have lots and lots of different data sources. And again, we'll go into great detail on that in the uh, operational planning training. So when I tell you we're going to reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year, makes perfect sense. Really a great target, right? Now, the question comes up, how are we going to do that? That's what the activities are all about. Activities are the set of steps you're going to go through that you believe will get you to that 25% reduction. As you may remember, there are three distinct types of activities. Project-based was the original and by far the most common. Uh, quality assurance and a quantitative measurement. I'm going to go through kind of quickly an example of each of these here. So our first project-based activity is create training content and materials for students and faculty on a dangers of smoking. So you might think you're going to do some PowerPoints and maybe some videos, some user guides, whatever you need to go do the training. Uh, and it's a project. The performance metric or target in this case is how do I know when I've successfully completed the activity? So if you're creating training content, once you create the training content, you're done with the activity. When are we planning on doing it? So you can see we actually have this in here as beginning and ending date in here, ending on my birthday, by the way. That's cool. OK. Um, and then we have a measurement over here. The measurement, as you can see, is just percent complete. Now, again, there's options on this that we'll go into in the, other, in the future training, but the, the default is 100 percent complete. So you can see down here, Diane Cox put the notes in there, and it said uh, completed chapter one back on 119 of 24. Uh, and there's four chapters in here. indicates this is probably about 25%. And then chapter two, 50, 75, and 100%. So you can see going through time that this was updated. The other thing we do at the uh, activity level, in addition to the objective level, where we assign Steve Hansen as our objective lead, we assign activity leads and team members. To do that, we click on this little pencil icon here. And we're filtered right now within the Tobacco 2024 group. If I want to look at everybody in the department, I just click on the little X here, which clears the filter, and it shows me everybody. So in this case, you see we have team members. So we've got three team members. We've got a team lead. So Diane is the lead of this team. And then we got the email notification. Same email that Steve got, Diane's going to get. And the link is going to take her back into the particular activities that she's doing in here. Over here on the right column, FTE, full-time equivalent. Uh, what portion of this person's time is dedicated to this activity during the time frame of the activity? Uh, not used real often, by the way. It's typically used during budgeting cycles or if you're going after grant dollars and you want to know how much is this program costing, you know, typically the, the biggest cost is going to be people, right? So you can go in here and say, okay, 10% of Diane's time and 10% of William's time and 30% of Andrea's time, it's a zero to one scale, um, is dedicated to this particular activity. So if I go back to my activity up here, you can see that we have a 0.5 FTE when it adds those up. And if I take all three of these activities rolled up to their objective, it says we have a 1.0 FTE. So if I take that 1.0 FTE and multiply it by our average cost of labor, if you will, including all benefits and everything, you get a good idea of what this is costing. It's, you know, one FTE of X number of thousands of dollars per year, whatever it happens to be in there. So that's kind of what that's about. Again, not used real often, but if you need to go out and say, hey, how many grant dollars do I need to do this? You can plug those numbers in there, look at it, do your calculations and get a good idea of the dollars that you need. Uh, the other thing you can do is add external partners. So down here at the bottom, we have activity partners. If I click on this one, it shows that we have four partners in the system here. Uh, on the left side is the partner organization. So you can see we have the MSG dashboard selected. On the right side would be all of the contacts in that organization. So right now we just have Fred in there, but we can have Fred and Andrea and Abigail and everybody else in the system in here. 
So what I'm saying is Fred Erickson is helping us to create the training content at this point in time. Now, let's say you had an activity that you just completely outsourced to VMSG and to Fred to do, you know, creating video content or whatever it might be in there. Uh, Fred can then be made a system user, which gives you the ability to uh, assign him that email notification. So now instead of somebody having to call Fred and getting the information, the information, the email can go directly to Fred. He can go log back into the system under a, a limited user, uh, we call it um, activity partner user, uh, and to be able to go in and update the specific activity that he's been assigned to. So that is our uh, external partners. So what we just went over is kind of the, the basis of activity number one, create the training content. Now, once we get that training content created, we're going to go in here and we're going to take that training content and we're going to go to the schools and provide nine training sessions each month on the dangers of smoking to students and faculty. We call this a QA or quality assurance activity. Uh, the, the uniqueness about it is, number one, it's cyclical. We're always measuring within a given time frame. Now, that time frame is pretty automated. So if I say we're measuring monthly, you see we have a, a start date for that cycle here, 10-1. So when I get done with this month and I save it, it's going to say, hey, do you want to move the start date forward? I'll say, yes, I do. And it'll move it to 11-1. Then we'll be measuring into November. And the other thing kind of unique about this is most of the, the traffic lights that you see up here are manual settings because there's typically a lot more information involved than is in the uh, plan element itself. You know, like somebody's going to be retiring. Well, that wouldn't show up in the plan element. But if you know that, you might want to set the traffic light to yellow and say, hey, Andrew's retiring at the end of the month. We need to replace her, whatever. But in this particular one, we have enough information to automatically set the traffic light. So we're, what we're doing is we're saying, if we get to our target of nine training sessions a month, the light will be green. And we're picking a number. We say six is not good enough. So if we only get to six, we're going to call that red. And then if it gets to seven or eight, it's going to be yellow. So cyclical, anywhere between weekly and every five years. And uh, we can set the traffic light automatically here. Activity number three, we call a quantitative measurement activity. Contact all 20 tobacco vendors within one mile of Wayne High School to assure they're not selling to minors. Uh, the QM activity is very, very similar to the project-based activity, with the exception that we have a target quantity. Now, having a target quantity means that it's pretty easy to calculate. So right now, we're saying that we actually have contacted all 20 vendors, and it calculated to be 100%. So 20 divided by our 20 target is 100%. Had it been only 10 vendors contacted, it's going to calculate to 50%. So think about all the different things that you count in public health. So you got, you're doing vaccinations. How many did we do last month? Uh, you're distributing some kind of medication. How many did we distribute? Uh, you may be doing car seat installations. How many did we do? So it's really a pretty handy one. It's the second most used type of activity. And again, all the activities have uh, activity leaders and team members and external partners, if in fact there are external partners involved. So those are the three activities that we believe are going to get us to our target of a 25% reduction at Wayne High School. So let's go back and look at that in the pyramid. The group was Tobacco 2024. Uh, in that group, we had three different initiatives. We chose tobacco cessation. Under tobacco cessation, we had several goals. We chose reduce smoking in high schools. Under that, we had those smart objectives, and we chose reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. And then the activities or the steps we're going to go through to get there. So that is the, the planning model. Now, every plan falls into the same model. Uh, and, and we're going to go into this in, in detail when we get into the operational planning, but just kind of an FYI. If you have a need to have different nomenclature, we have what we call synonyms, which says anytime you see groups, call it uh, strategies or whatever it happens to be. So you can change that for specific reports. Uh, sometimes the state has requirements, you know, that you need to provide. So we can do that anyhow. So this is our tobacco cessation plan. We're going to be executing the plan. And while we're doing that, we're going to take it through the PDCA cycle. So we've created the plan. Now we're going to, in the due phase, we're going to execute the plan. So in this particular case, Diane and her team are going to finish up the training content. William is going to take that training content, and he's going to go out to each of the schools and do the training. Uh, and then Tom is going to go out to those tobacco vendors to make sure they're not doing bad things. And this is where that real-time planning comes in. Each of these folks that's doing anything in there at the objective or activity level is going to get that email notification. In that email, again, is a link that takes them right back in here to keep things up to date. Now, I highly recommend that these emails go to what I call the horse's mouth, the person who's actually doing the activities or managing the objectives. 
What some people have done in the past is gone to the supervisors. If you're doing that, you're just adding a load to the supervisor that you don't need to do because now he's got to go, he or she has got to go find that person. They've got to get the update information. They've got to go back in and update the activities or the objectives. It's a waste of time. Let the system do the work for you. Go straight to the horse's mouth. They know exactly what's going on with their activity because it's their activity. They'll go right back in and do the update. And just to give you a number, this is about a three to five minute per person per month process. So if you get, get it assigned out to the activity leads, they're going to go in the beginning of the month or whenever you set it up, and they're going to be able to go in and, and update all of their activities in a very, very efficient manner here. <clears throat> now, the reason we collect all the information in the background while we're executing is for the check phase. Check phase is super simple. It's all it is is comparing the plan to the actual. If I go back here and go back to my objective, let's say. So remember the objective is the target. What are we trying to accomplish here? It's really simple. If I've got all that information collected in the background, I need only to click this little chart button right here. And there's our simplistic line chart. We started back in August of 23 with 0% reduction because that was the beginning of the program. And you can see we slowly ramped up and got to our 25% target. So that's all there is to it. If you're collecting that information in the background, it's that easy. Now, if you're not collecting that information in the background, every time you go to the check phase, you've got to go and manually do the uh, real-time plan or do the updates you know, uh, manually. Just a waste of time. Let the system do the work for you. Now, after the check phase, you're going to go into the adjust phase. What we just saw is we had a plan of 25. We had an actual 25. Sounds perfect to me. Everything's working great. We're going to bypass the plan change. We don't need to do that. We'll continue to execute. Every once in a while, we'll continue to go back in and check it and just keep going through this cycle. Now, let's assume for a second that the top of that chart, which, by the way, is the micro-level performance monitoring. So objectives and activities are the micro-level. Let's say it was only topped out at 21 and not 25%. Now we have to make a decision. The decision comes down to typically one of two things. Is the plan too high? Can we just not get there with the resources we have? If that's the case, we'll take the plan down to, say, 21 continue through the cycle to keep it at 21. Or we could say, nope, we can get there. We just need more resources. So maybe the resources we have, like doing the training, uh, instead of doing nine sessions, we do 12 sessions. Maybe there's more tobacco vendors out there that we uh, don't know about. So maybe there's 30 of them. So we're going to go out and get to those 30 tobacco vendors out there. Maybe there's a whole other set of activities we hadn't thought about yet that we can add into the plan to get to that number. Then there's a fourth option. The fourth option is kind of a combination of both of those. Maybe the plan's just a little bit too high. So maybe 23 is a realistic number. Uh, and maybe to get there, the only thing we need to do is do more training sessions. So we're going to go to 12 training sessions. So those are kind of the four options in a PDCA cycle. But every plan is going through this cycle all the time. Now, as you guys get ready for your accreditation slash reaccreditation, you realize that all of these plans have a defined life cycle. So your strategic plan, your child, your chip are all a five-year life cycle. Now, if in fact I'm updating that plan every month, let's say, does that plan have an infinite life cycle? Because it's always being refreshed uh, on a monthly basis. So uh, I think you'll find that that really does fly even with the, uh, the fab people as you're showing them that, hey, this plan was updated last month. You can show them exactly when it was updated, who did the updates in there. So that is the, the PDCA cycle. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is macro level performance monitoring or the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is exactly that. And it's a dynamic dashboard. So I'm going to take you back live in here. I'm going to go up to our groups tab and I'm going to go down and select community health. So everybody, all of you, when you log in are taken to your default group. So whatever group you belong to, and some people, it's just a strategic plan. Some people, in my case, it's going to be community health. If I'm the health director, it's probably going to be at the department level. So the nice thing about that is the only thing you have to do, so I'm, I'm a community health director. When I logged in, it took me to community health. The only thing I have to do to get to my dashboard for community health and its subgroups, Tobacco and WIC, is to click this traffic light in the top right corner. And what it's doing is going into the background and putting together literally hundreds of data points so it can bring it all together on one screen to give you that real-time snapshot of the performance of community health in here. Yeah, a little slow today. Typically takes, you know, 10 to 12 seconds to do that. Okay, so this is my, my dashboard. Uh, and again, you can see up here, it's USA Public Health, Community Health. I can go select any group and have a dashboard for that group. So the department is a group. I can have a dashboard for the entire department. 
my strategic plan is a group. I can have a dashboard just for the strategic plan. So any group that's on there, including its first level subgroups will show up up here. So what I'm looking at is up in the top left corner is the number of activities, objectives, or goals in each traffic light status. Now you notice I have a click finger on here that I can drill down to the information so I can see these two yellow activities or these two green activities. And I have a schedule gauge. Uh, the schedule gauge is saying aggregately we are six days behind schedule. Now that doesn't mean everything's behind schedule. Some of them could be ahead, some of them could be behind, but overall if we add them all together it's six days behind schedule. And in the performance management or performance monitoring training, we go into great detail on this. Down at the bottom, we can drill down. So the first thing I typically want to look at is my people. How is everybody performing against their assigned activities? So I have my activity leaders down this column. This uh, next column over here says this is the last time that person was in there and updated their information. It is color coded. So green is less than 30 days ago, kind of your ideal point here. Yellow is 30 to 60. You know, could be okay. Maybe uh, Andrea was on vacation during that first week of the month, and she's going to catch up here pretty quickly. Uh, red means it's been over 60 days. That probably means that uh, Diane and William need to have a little conversation uh, to understand how to do the updates. Maybe they just kind of forgotten how to do it, or uh, they've been really busy, whatever it happens to be. But ideally, you want to keep all this in the green so that you know you're working with the latest information. Remember the FTE column at the right of the uh, activity. If I assign a bunch of FTEs out there, a bunch of different activities, I want to roll them up here by person. The reason for that is you don't want to overload people. So a 1.0 FTE is about, you know, it's a 40-hour week, basically. So what I want to do is make sure everybody is at a 1.0 or lower. You see up here, Diane's at a 1.35, and hence it's red, meaning that she's quite a bit overloaded, about 35%. Lagging says I have uh, one activity here that the calculation between beginning date, ending date, percent complete says I'm behind schedule. Overall for Diane, she's 46 days ahead of schedule across all of the uh, what 21 activities or whatever she's been assigned over here. So she's ahead of schedule on her stuff. She does have one activity that's overdue, meaning the ending date of the activity is before today and it's not yet 100% complete. And then the number of red, yellow, green, and gold activities uh, for her. So that's view one. Uh, view two would be my groups. Uh, in this case, it would be community health division plus tobacco and WIC down here and the same basic information over here. And again, like I said, we're going to go into great detail on this and performance monitoring training. And my third one is priorities. Strategic priorities from your strategic plan will appear down this column, and they're going to be mapped against every other plan in the system. So in fact, your strategic plan should be the overall plan for the department. So everything should in fact roll up to it. Well, this is going to tell you how well that works in there. Top right corner, my priorities. At some point in time, you're going to find something that you just want to personally keep your eye on. And that's what these are. And typically they're objectives because it's my target. You know, what am I trying to accomplish? So these are individually selectable objectives. On the objective screen, there's a little flag. And again, we'll go into this in detail in future training. A little green flag you set. And next time I go to here, they show up. You can have as many as you want on here. Most often are things that are yellows and reds because they need help. Uh, and most often are things that you're working on personally or your assigned team is working on and you just want to keep them front and center. Uh, and by the way, these traffic lights will change in real time. So if I, you know, sitting up here and this one goes from yellow to green and I see a note on there that says, hey, you know, everything is good. I can click on there and take it off of there real quickly. So this is my, my macro level or my dashboard. Now, there's some of these features that you have available on your phone. I don't know if any of you tried this yet or not. You don't need to download an app. Uh, there's a lot of health departments who have limitations by their IT folks on what they can put on their phones, kind of for safety reasons. So what we did is we built what we call a dynamic app. Uh, what it is, is it's just like on your desktop, it's in the web browser on your phone. So if I go to my, my web browser uh, on my phone, I go to the same link that I do, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes here, the same link that I do for my desktop, the same login credentials, it knows it's a phone, it brings up BMSG Mobile. This is the same screen we were just looking at, broken down into three phone screens. Top left corner, bottom, top right corner. Everything on these screens is clickable, meaning I can turn my, my priorities on and off. I can drill down on any of these data elements over here. I can look at any of the data elements in the traffic light over here, uh, and then come right back into this particular screen. These blue arrows are what take you between the different the three different screens in the dashboard. So it gives you the ability to have everything on your desktop. Not everybody sits in front of a computer all day, so it gives you the same ability to have that. 
Now, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit is the accreditation and reaccreditation project plans. We have got a, a project plan for every uh, accreditation known to man, I think. Let's go back here. So it's under the group screen here. I just got a sampling of them in here. But for instance, um, did I hear you guys say you're going reaccreditation? Is that right? You haven't quite applied yet? Okay. So this is the FAB 2022 reaccreditation local version. So it's local, tribal, and state. Let's click on that. So now we're on the reaccreditation plan. If I start marching down through the plan, you're going to see the process uh, for reaccreditation. There's not much to it. There's your annual reporting and your reaccreditation process versus the accreditation. You know, you got the preparation application, document selection, et cetera. But all that's built under here. But if you get down to the domain levels here, uh, if I start drilling down, I'm going to get obviously to the uh, standards down here. Now, the other thing we did is we used that uh, data source capability to give you direct access back to the FAB documentation. So we extracted all of the information to build these plans from the FAB documentation. But at some point in time, you might want to go back to, again, the horse's mouth. So if I click on this link here, it should hopefully take me right back to the FAB documentation for standard 1.1. So you don't have to go searching around. These are really, really long documents, as you can see, 237 pages. So it's nice to go right to the, the place that you need to be in there. So every standard has got the documentation link in there. Now, when you get down to the next level, which are the measures, this is where the documentation comes into play here. So at this point, it says we're going to develop a community health assessment. Over here is the, the document requirement is one community health assessment data within five years. This is the document management button right here. You see it's got three documents attached. I click on that. And as you can only see, there's one document showing because it's version three. Show all versions up here. I click on that and there they are. Now, typically as you're using this to control your documents, and by the way, uh, all these documents are stored up on our secure servers. They're backed up every night. In 15 years, we never lost a document. So they're a pretty safe place to put them. And they're attached to the measures and the activities uh, specifically for uh, where they're required in here. And you're going to end up with, you know, 300 to 1,000 documents. Now, typically what we see people doing on the document level here is they're going to have different versions. The first version typically is a draft, and you can have as many drafts as you want. Once you get to green, that typically indicates that you as the department have completed the document. And then the gold would mean, hey, we've uploaded it into the EFAB system. So it's just a nice way to track your documents in here. You can see this on the report. You can see there's a document management screen, as you can see every document in the accreditation plan. So it really is a nice tool to be able to do that. Now, uh, when you get down here, it says one community health assessment data within five years. First of all, not everybody in the world knows what's in a community health assessment. And not everybody knows what FAB's requirements are for a community health assessment. So when we get down to the activity level, here are the seven requirements that FAB has for the CHA. Now, the first one you can see is a list of participating partners. So again, my document management, you can see, has the three documents back there. So it's going to be the list of, of partners in here. And you can go through all of these first, collect the information together, get the documents together, and then use that information to go build your CHA. So the, the plan you know, takes you all the way down to the, the bottom level. Now, what we typically do to get folks started is you're going to tell us when you're planning on submitting documentation. You know, it could be next year or whatever it is. We're going to put an end date in there. You're going to pick a start date, you know, wherever you're ready to, to get the process going. It could be anything you want. Uh, and so you have a start date and an end date. And then at the domain level, you're going to tell us who are your domain managers or domain leads, so one through 10. We will push that name all the way down to the objectives and the activities for each domain. Now, the domain lead, a lot of times will go as the objective lead, and then they're going to reassign the activity, some of them maybe, to some of their team members. So, you know, getting the the list of participating partners together, something like that might be assigned to a team member. So once we assign the people and the dates, we turn on a real-time planning, this whole plan is automated now. It's going to notify everybody who's designated in the plan. It's time to go in and collect the documentation for the community health assessment or whatever it happens to be. And those emails will go out on a monthly basis as required. You know, when you're behind schedule, it's going to say, hey, you need to catch up on this, or it was due to be done last month or whatever happens to be in there. So uh, the plans are in there. By the way, you can have as many of these plans as you want. We And we have a lot more than what's showing in here. But uh, if you want to have the accreditation and reaccreditation plan, there's also the pathways plan in there, the uh, FAB light, I call it in here. So it's a, a mini version of the FAB accreditation plan. 
all these plans are available to you. Just let us know what you want, and they're all in there. We don't charge any for that. Now, one thing that's uh, kind of been interesting lately is a lot of people, before they go through the final site visit, is they do a, a mock site visit. So they're going to hire somebody who's a fab expert. and We have some uh, folks that we can refer to you. Uh, but they're going to hire that person as an expert to go in and review everything that they have. During COVID, that was very difficult because a lot of health departments were working from home. A lot of people were not traveling. There was a lot of consternation about everything you did. So what we did is virtualize the process. So if you're using the accreditation plan that's built in there, what you'll do is tell us who the site visitor is. We'll get them signed up in the system. We will train them on how to use the review process, which is this little button on the activity screen opens up this uh, review window here. It's got the notes in there. It's got the traffic lights, everything you want to know what we're afraid to ask. They will go through every document and every plan element. And then uh, there's a report that's called the accreditation review report that gets generated that shows you all of your stuff plus all of their suggestions. And you can scan through it and say, yep, we're good to go. Or oops, uh, our strategic plan is uh, you know, going to be up, out of date by the time we submit it, whatever it happens to be. So uh, this is all built in. It's kind of interesting that we've seen some RFPs lately where people actually refer to the virtual mock site visit. And to the best of our knowledge, we invented it and we're the only people who actually use it. So it's kind of cool that it's getting around out there. So what we just went over is the core functionality of the VMSG dashboard. Now, there's about in the neighborhood of 240 health departments using the system, most of them going through uh, either state accreditation, we got the whole state of North Carolina, 86 health departments, I think. Um, they're going through the state accreditation through the University of North Carolina, but most of them are going through FAB accreditation or reaccreditation. So what most people do is they start out getting the FAB six pack of plans in the system. And some of these kind of, sometimes they get combined, like QI sometimes become part of the strategic plan, things along that line. So you can do that, but you got to have the six plans in there somewhere. Uh, and then you use the accreditation plan to walk you through the process and be able to track the process, excuse me, real-time planning, by the way, uh, because you are in fact involving everybody at every level in the system through real-time planning, you kind of automatically meet 9.1.6, which says involve people at all levels in your organization. So everybody who's done those three things, by the way, has gotten fully demonstrated by FAB for performance management. So it does work and we know how it gets you there. <clears throat> now, that is kind of the, the basics of the system. What I'm going to do is walk you through a couple of things. I'm going to walk you through some of the other features that we'll be covering in the uh, upcoming plans here. I'm going to walk you through the real-time planning process so you know about the email notifications and the quick updates. Um, and then we're going to walk through the login process. For those of you who have not logged in or have logged in and forgotten how to do that and get your login credentials, we're going to go through that. And by the way, there's a PDF file attached to the email notification that you got for this meeting that has the steps to go through the login. So you'll have all of that information in there. So let's talk about some of the additional features. Uh, intelligent document management. Uh, this, by the way, has become the most popular feature in the system. And here's what it's all about. About nine months ago, one of our Michigan departments came to us and said, hey, uh, we got a problem we think you can help us solve. We have a bunch of, in their case, it was standard operating procedures that have to be updated on a fiscal year basis. So we, we know who's supposed to be doing the updates. We know which ones are doing the are getting updated here. We've got the documents, but what we don't have is that linkage that says, hey, Fred, you need to update SOP number one by the end of October. So what we did is built exactly that in there. So what a lot of people are doing is actually going through, let me go back to my group screen here, and we have critical documents. So we've got a group called critical documents. If I start drilling down, we have policies, standard operating procedures, memos of understanding, grant documents, you can have FAB documents, anything that you have that are critical documents. Let's say I drill down under policies. I'm going to say manage and update departmental administrative policies, manage department healthcare policies. Under administrative policies, I'm going to say uh, update department administrative policies each fiscal year. And then I get down to the activity level. And we created this new type of activity as part of the QA activity. And it's actually this timeline right here. So you'll see the timeline. The beginning date is typically the beginning of the fiscal year. I check the timeline. It gives me a field percent to yellow. So you see it's at 90% to yellow. What that means is 90% of the way through the year, or what is it, about 10 and a half months, I think, through the year, the light turns yellow. When the light turns yellow, Andrea over here is the activity lead, gets notified that it's time to update this. 
the document is attached right here in document management. So I'm going to go download this current policy. I'm going to do my updates on a policy. I'm going to upload the new version. When I save this particular activity, it gives me a little dialogue that says, hey, do you want to update to the next fiscal year? I'll say yes, and it's all over with. The light turns back to green, away you go. Now, if Andrea doesn't have time to get this thing updated by the end of the fiscal year, the 100% mark here, it's going to turn red. Everybody gets notified that, hey, the policy is out of date here. So you can have as many different policies and SOPs as you want in here. But by doing this, what you're doing is managing all of those critical documents. Now, the other thing you can do is give everybody read-only access. People who are not uh, expected to do the updates on here can have read-only access to critical documents. That allows them to go through and, and navigate their way down to those specific documents they need to, to do to run their business, if you will, and have read access so they can download documents, they can use them, they just can't update them and upload them and that kind of thing. So really a really a nice feature in the system here. Um, reporting, there's a boatload of reports. In the performance monitoring training, we go into most of those. Uh, VMSD public, the ability to create public-facing web page out of any plan elements in the system, any or all if you want to, actually. Three-dimensional planning. Uh, this is how we bring everything together across all the plans. It's kind of a, an umbrella that covers all the different plans. So you're looking for commonalities between your chip and your strategic plan, or uh, how, does, how does some parts of your strategic plan fit into your accreditation plan, that sort of thing. So, And this is another training that we'll do uh, towards the end here. So that's kind of the, uh, the features that we'll be covering in the ongoing training. I do want to walk you quickly through uh, real-time planning and the quick update features because quick update is what most people will use to do the updates to their assigned activities and objectives. So you're going to pick a time frame. Most people pick a monthly cycle. Uh, it can be anywhere between daily and monthly. So let's say you pick it for the first Monday of the month. First Monday of the month at literally at 1 a.m., the system goes in, it looks at everybody that you assigned as an objective or an activity lead, and it asks three questions. Has this person been in in the last 30 days and updated their stuff? Number two, does this person have anything that is behind schedule? And number three, does this person have anything that's overdue past the ending date? If none of those are true, no spam, no email goes out. If any of them are true, however, out go the emails. As we talked about, emails go to typically internal folks, but they can also be designated to selected external partners. Now, the only people who get these emails are people who are designated as objective or activity leads. So when they log in, they'll have an option to go in to the quick update screens. Quick update screens, there's two of them, and I'm going to go and take you live into there so you can actually see them. Super simple way to update the information. There's only three fields to update. I can cycle through my traffic lights put in a new data value. So I did nine training sessions this month. I can put a note in there that says, was able to get all my notes or all my training sessions done this month, whatever it happens to be. I'll go through my activities. If I've assigned objectives, I'll go through those. And in about five minutes, I'm going to log out for the month there. So this is just a, a quick snapshot of the quick update screen. The top of it up here is just the top of the pyramid. So what plan are we under? Service initiative, goal, objective, activity. It says I got 29 activities to update. Again, three fields to update, traffic light, data value, notes field. I've got my data source available to me down here. My next button, I'm going to cycle through those. I'm going to take you live into that in a second, just walk you through that so everybody kind of understands uh, that this. a lot of you will be doing this. The reminder email is going to look like this. Here's the three criteria I mentioned. Why did I get it? This is an FYI kind of. For all the activities you've been assigned, here's the traffic light status. Your system administrators will be assigned in here. So it's going to come up with your folks in here with their email address and phone number. So if you have any questions or why did I get this email or what's it all about, you can go right into there and get it. And then the link. This is the link to go back in to log in to the dashboard here. So uh, I'm going to take you through the login a couple of different ways. First of all, I'm going to just go through the steps. Uh, again, these steps are also in the, uh, the PDF document that's attached here. And then I'm going to actually go live and take you through the login process here. So here's what you're going to do. The link that you saw in that email, login.vmsgdashboard.com. Click on that link. It takes you to the login. If you just want to remember vmsgdashboard.com, if you go there, that's the home page for the VMSG dashboard. Top right corner, there's a link that you can click on. It'll take you back to this link. There's a dialog box that will pop up, and there's a send button on it. The third button, the leftmost button is send. That means send me my login credentials. I'm going to click on that. The next dialog box says, enter your email address, click send again. I'll do that. 
Hopefully I'll receive the success dialogue. It just means I found all your stuff and I sent it to you. And by the way, that email goes out immediately. So if you don't get it in a minute or two, check your spam folder, et cetera. It could get lost. If you don't get the success dialogue, that means something is wrong with your user account. Either it's not there, your email's wrong, something. So just contact us. We'll fix it for you. Then you're going to click the login button on the main screen. Again, I'm going to go live into this. You're going to enter your user ID or email address, either one. So you're going to get a new user ID. You don't have to use it. You can throw it away if you want to. Your email address works just fine as your user ID. You're going to enter your password, uh, and then you're going to click login, and away you go into the system here. Now, the login credentials email looks like this. Very simple. User ID and password. And again, don't even need to remember the user ID. You can put your email address in there anytime. The password, however, initially will be a fairly encrypted uh, password. It's got all kinds of strange characters in there. So what I do highly recommend is that you highlight the password and copy it. Control C if you want to, to copy it or right click and copy. Uh, that way you'll know that you're getting it right because sometimes the characters look different and I've seen people have trouble. I've had trouble doing that before. Uh, now, <clears throat> let's go into the system and do it live. So to log out, so up here are the, the quick access buttons up here, the a dashboard, this is the reports menu. This is the main menu, help and information, which I'll go into in a second, uh, and log out. So I'm going to click my log out button. Sure enough, I want to log out. It's going to take me to the dashboard homepage. So you see it here. Up here in the right corner is that link I was talking about. Uh, if you're already a user, click here to log in. I'll log in here. It takes me back to the login screen. And then here's that dialogue I was talking about. Uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do is hit my send button. And it's going to ask me to enter my email address. I'll do that and hit send again. I hopefully get a success dialogue, which I did, which just says all your stuff has just been sent to you. So you should be getting that email I just showed you with your login credentials uh, in your email. Again, it goes out immediately. So if you don't get it, please check your spam folder. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say, okay, I want to log in now. So now I've got my login credentials on the email. And again, you know, you can use username or email in here. And I would paste the password in now. So control V will paste it in there, highlight the password, control V, hit login. Now, again, the only people who get the email are those folks who are designated activity and objective leads. So we've been at the main menu. Let's go to the quick update screen. Go to quick update. It's going to go in and gather up just the specific activities and objectives assigned to me. And it's going to show me my quick update screen. So here we are again, the group service goal objective, activity one of one. Here's my activity. Here's the performance metric. But as I'm updating it, it's all I got to do is I can cycle through the traffic lights with my mouse, all four of them. I can put in a data value in here. I can put in a note. I can time and date stamp the note. Uh, if the data source is available, the link will show up down here. I'll have it available to me in here. Uh, you can see that document management's available on here. So if you're using this on your uh, FAM accreditation plan, boom, you can do the documents right here or any other piece in the system. You can do that. Before you go anywhere else, I would highly suggest that you go in and change your password. Click on the key button here. Uh, paste again, control V to paste that uh, crazy password that you got in the email into here. Put in your new password, verify your new password like every other website in the world, and hit update. You're all set to go in here. So once you get your password done, you're, you're ready to go. Now, uh, once I'm done with this particular activity, I'm going to click the next button here. And it says, hey, you're also an objective lead. You want to go there? I'll say, sure. I'm going to go to a similar screen uh, for the objectives. And again, it's got three fields to update. So here's my objective. It's above the activities like it is in a pyramid. So I've got my traffic light, got my data value, got my notes field, time and date stamp, data source, et cetera. But you also notice that the activities show up under the objective, kind of where they belong. And you got a, a blue one down here, and you got two gray ones. The blue one says this is already assigned to you, which is the one we just updated, by the way. So you don't need to do anything with it. You just updated it. The gray ones probably means that you as the objective lead have assigned these to members of your staff or somebody else. Uh, so they're actually assigned to somebody else. Now, maybe that person is out on vacation. You want to do the update. I can click on that, click on that and get my updates in there. So it's available to you in there, but just shows you these are the uh, activities rolling up to this objective. Uh, and then when I'm done, I can go ahead and log out and I'm, you know, kind of done for the day here. Again, you know, kind of a three to five minute thing typically here. And quick updates available on your phone. So same thing. I, you know, here's my story. 
I'm going to be driving into the office in the morning. It's the first Monday of the month. I'm going to stop at Starbucks and have a coffee. I grab my coffee, sit down at the table, pop open my phone. Here's that email from VMST dashboard. Ah, let's go ahead and get this done while we're having our coffee here. Click on the link, log in. You know, once you log in, once it's stored in the, the browser on your phone already, uh, it's going to take you to activities, quick update. Again, you got the traffic light, the data value, and the notes field, your next button. Once I get through my activities, it's going to take me to my objective screen. Uh, again, traffic light, data value, notes field, next button. Cycle through those. When I'm done, I log out and I'm done for the month. So again, just more of a convenience feature. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here is the built-in help and information. Uh, and I do highly recommend that you, if you have any questions uh, before you go to your uh, your admins or, or myself, try this out. Go back to here. I'm going to go back to my main menu. I'm going to go up to my service tab up here. So I'm at my service tab for tobacco cessation. Let's say I come up with a question on, you know, what's this button for down here? Or how do I add a new service or initiative? The only thing I have to do is go to the blue eye up here. It is context sensitive. So it knew where I came from, services and initiatives. First of all, it's a step-by-step -step process to do anything on that screen. So to add, to remove, to edit, it's all on there. And if I scroll down, Every button on that screen is defined down here exactly what it does. So uh, th there's no rollovers for a, a technical reason on the on the buttons on here, but they're all defined right in here. So I can go right to them, and I can go right back to my uh, other screen with the back arrow. Now, in addition to that, there is a video training module that walks through everything on here. It's about a five-minute training module. Then there is a, a complete user guide in a hyperlink PDF down here, the blue one, so a lot of people like to print the, or uh, put it on their desktop. It's a PDF. It's uh, the table of contents is hyperlinked. So you can click on any table of contents item, takes you to that spot in there. And then this one down here, if you've not read this and you're just kind of getting started or restarted with the system, I do highly recommend reading implementation guidelines. Stuff we've collected over the years from different clients on things that work great, things that don't work so well, uh, the type of people that typically adapt to a system like this first, the type of people that, you know, come along later on. Here's some uh, templates that we created to create operational plans. Here's some IT issues we ran into. Uh, by the way, page two starts a step-by-step -step process to enter an operational plan in the systems. So that's all in there. All these are available. In addition, up here in the top left corner, there are five video-based training modules. So introduction to the dashboard is what we're doing today, so you can skip over that. Uh, basics just talks about every button and every screen, gives you kind of a definition of everything. The next one that we'll be doing live is operational planning. That's uh, a two-step process. We're going to show you how to do operational planning. We're going to define it. We're going to show you live examples from public health of every level of the pyramid. And then we're going to assign you homework. And the homework is to create an operational plan. A uh, very simple one, typically only six planning elements. And it can be something fun. It can be, you know, a vacation. It can be a kid's birthday, whatever it is. Uh, and then we're going to do another session to review those operational plans. Then we go to performance monitoring training. Performance monitoring training is all the uh, dashboard, the charts, the uh, reports, uh, VMSG public, all that stuff will be in there. If you've been assigned as an org admin level user, you'll have this one here available. It's about a 30-minute training on how to manage users, permissions, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of information in here available to you. Uh, you know, you obviously feel free to call anytime you want, but I would like you to just try that out and see if it does answer your question. And if it does not, you know, please feel free to reach out. And that was your drink out of a fire hose slash garden hose for the day. Questions? Everybody got their mask and snorkel on? Is that it? They can't can't talk. Okay, well, uh, what we'd love to I'm do- I'm sorry, I ahead. do have a question. Yes, please. Hi, this is Cassandra. Um, just curious as to if there's an easy way to move goals, objectives, and activities into a different group. Yes, very easy. Let me show you that. You can you actually you can move any plan from any level on down. So let's just say uh, I'm at the service initiative level and I want to copy a service, or I want to move it to a new place. Um, so what I can do is this is the copy button. These two pieces of paper down here is my copy button. And you'll notice this button next to it lights up the paste button. What I can do then is navigate to a new group. Uh, so maybe it's my community health division group and go back to services. 
And then if I hit this paste button here, it's going to create that entire new plan from the service level all the way down. Uh, so it'll have the services, goals, objectives. It'll have all the people who are assigned. Everything that you had in that plan will be copied in there. Now, if you want to move it, then you probably want to go back to the previous group here and delete the, the tobacco cessation. So you're actually getting rid of it. You're moving it in there. But the uh, you can move any level. So I've got that same copy and paste you'll notice down here at the goal level, uh, the objective level, uh, and the activity level. So th is that what you're looking for? Does that answer your question? I think so, yeah. So it's just going to be a copy and paste on that. Exactly. But the, the nice thing is it's copying the entire pyramid from where you are all the way down. So you don't have to go back in and redo. If you've got a complicated plan, you just want to move it. You just copy it to the new place, delete it from the old place, and you've got the entire plan, including all of the uh, assignments for team leads. Okay. Yeah, because what I did was I added more goals into a group that didn't need to be attached to it. So I think it might be a bit, a bit more complicated for me to fix that. It's okay, though. Well, no, if, if you could just copy that. Well, you're going to have to make sure they're under the, the part of the pyramid. So they would have to be under a similar service or initiative, which you can just go and right. create. And, and by the way, if you have trouble with that, uh, send me an email telling me what you're you're trying to do. Let me take a look at it. I could probably help you. Yeah, that might be helpful. That sounds good. Yeah, please do. I'm, I'm happy to help. Thank okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? Know what? Okay. Everybody wants to get back to work. I can tell you guys are all digging to get back to work. Okay. Uh, I will let you go. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if we've set up the follow on trainings, but I would love to get you into the operational planning training session sessions and the performance monitoring training. I think that'll help everybody to, to get down into it. Okay, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.